In this lesson, we're going to talk about the paragraph panel, point text, and paragraph text. Now, point text is select your text tool, click, and type. My name is. That's point text. Real simple. But Photoshop offers another way. You could click and drag with the text tool and define a space to type in. See? This is called paragraph text. Now something else you can do just real quick, if you press Alt and drag out a space, it will actually tell you the paragraph text size, which is nice, and you can adjust it too, just on a side note. So what we're going to do is I'm going to draw out a paragraph text, and I selected some text already, so I'm going to press Control v to paste it, and it's just basically a, a beautiful poem uh, by the renowned Maya Angelou. And then I'm going to just quickly add some quotes here and here and then I'm gonna commit it and then I'm gonna bring out the paragraph panel remember if you don't have the paragraph panel you can go here and select paragraph but it's also usually associated um, with the character panel now when I click on this this poem is pretty large so if all the text cannot fit in the text box you'll see a little overflow button right here so basically this means either shrink the text or um, drag out the text box some more. Now, the, the paragraph panel has some options that you can use. If you select the text layer, this will apply to all of the paragraphs and everything in between. If you select a paragraph, then it will just only occur to that paragraph you selected. And then here are some options. You have your typical left, center, there you go, center, right. Then you have your justifies, as you can see here. Let me go back. Full justification over here. Here is the indent. Uh, this is the first line indent. Um, here, this is the amount of spacing um, before your paragraph. And ironically, this is the amount of spacing after your paragraph. And then over here is your right margin. You can hyphenate. And what that basically means is if I select this and I reduce the... You got it's tricky here. I, I almost had it. There we go. And I were to decrease this, I'm trying to get it to where I, there you go. You'll see the hyphenation. Now you may not like this hyphenation. If this hyphenation bothers you, you could select the word, go over to the flyout panel, choose the character panel, excuse me, on this one, choose, and then say no break. And this will prevent that from uh, breaking to a, hy a hyphenation. So let me go back to the paragraph panel select the layer so we can see the whole thing and then let's talk about some other options that are kind of hidden in the paragraph panel which are pretty nice if we click this little fly out menu you'll see here a thing called Roman hanging punctuation what is that notice where the punctuation is right now if I click on this you can see the text box here it's inside well I think the punctuation and it's just a personal opinion I think punctuation looks better when it's hanging outside because it's easy it, it seems like a it's a nice flow continuity so I'm going to select the layer and then I'm going to choose Roman hanging punctuation and watch. Notice how the punctuation is now outside the box. Everything looks prettier. And I hate to use prettier, but I think everything looks better this way. And that's what ro um, Roman hanging punctuation is. Now, if you notice here, we have Adobe Single Line Composer and Adobe Every Line Composer. Adobe Every Line Composer is the better one, you would say. Um, and this takes into account every line to make um, con some considerations and you can read the Adobe help file on this whereas the Adobe single line composer it does it one by one another thing that we have is justification and hyphen hyphenation there is a um, a gentleman by David Blattner if I'm right if you get a chance to watch any of his videos he, he goes more in depth on justification hyphenation and what is the perfect setup um, I'm not one to talk about that. Uh, he's the guru on that. And also, mostly in Photoshop, you're not going to have paragraphs. Uh, that's usually going to be for InDesign. But, you know, they do provide this in Photoshop just in case. But if you do click on Justification, you'll see there's three dots, which usually indicate there's a dialog box. And you can have word spacing. So you can have the minimum word spacing, the desired, and the maximum. You can choose the letter spacing, the glyph, and the auto letting. It's incredible. Uh, the other one here is hyphenation, which is really neat. 
Here you can choose to hyphenate words that are longer than five letters, but after the first two and before the last two. Your hyphenation limit is two hyphens and you have hyphenation zones. You can even hyphenate capitalized words. So I mean this is incredible the kind of power you can get in Photoshop. And then here you know the reset paragraph and then close and close tab group the typical things. Now there are a couple other things that we need to mention real quick here. You have all this beautiful words that you've typed or paragraph. Wouldn't it be nice if you could check spelling? Well you can. Remember if you click in the paragraph you can check just the paragraph or if you select the layer it will select the whole layer and basically you will go up to edit check spelling and this will start checking the spelling and you'll see the typical things not in dictionary change to add the typical things that you've seen before so let me click that another thing that's very handy is the edit find and replace text find what and then you can replace it that's really nice that's another useful thing if you need and also something else I just want to mention on the side here. Um, you notice that this is a text layer. Another thing that we need to talk about with the text layer before we end this chapter is when you right click on the layer you have some other options that we haven't talked about. You can convert it to a smart object which we'll talk about smart objects in a different chapter and then you can create work paths. So you can convert it to a shape, you can create work paths from the type. Let me show you what this means. Uh, let me uh, let me turn this off and then let me create a new type layer and let me just say um, my name is for example right click choose create work pass and now it will create pass for which you can then move it didn't affect the text layer but created work pass from it for which you can um, play around and have fun with I would just say don't record that so as you can see, it created the path from it, but it didn't affect the text layer. That's a nice thing. Also, something else, um, you can rasterize your text. Watch what happens when you rasterize the, um, the text, and watch what happens to the type layer. Notice it becomes a regular la uh, layer now. You notice the T disappeared? Now I can move this around, right? But watch when I use the text tool. This is no longer text. See, it's starting a new layer. And as you can tell, so this is now um, editable editable text. So once you rasterize your type layer, you can't change it. So it's done. So just remember that sometimes making a copy and then rasterize is a better decision um, for text. Now when you rasterize text, it becomes an image. So for example, if you wanted a particular font for your website and you knew that you couldn't get that font, you could rasterize it and you can still use it because now it's an image. With the latest CSS, there's actually ways of actually saving font files on your web server and displaying them no matter who's viewing it. Um, this is one of the latest things that you can do with font. But in the meantime, if you wanted to, you could rasterize the layer and you will definitely have this font.